Welcome to the Dental Cat 3.0 Galway webinar of today. In today's session, we will go through a mock-up design with the AI-empowered Smile Creator, as well as through an anatomic bite splint. And with those two features, we are trying to show you some of the new features that we have. You will see that the AI-empowered Smile Creator and the, all the processes that are working with that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, with that module will help to reduce your times to design a lot more. And let, we, let us just surprise you with what we have to offer today. The copyright notices, I'm pretty sure you're all pretty much aware of that. This is our today's topics. As I said, we will go through the Smile Creator as well as the Byte Splint module with a new workflow that we integrated. And we hope you will enjoy that, of course. And if you want to learn more about that afterwards, after our presentation, you can also visit our ExoCAD wiki page as much as our YouTube channel or our Facebook channels like the ExoCAD expert channel or the regular ExoCAD channel. All right. And I would say with that, if there is nothing else to add here, I would say we would just go ahead and go right into the program. So for that matter, I'm gonna start with a very nice case of our very, very <clears throat> loved team colleague. It's Marco Anucci, and we will use this case. It's a real life case to create a mock-up design. Here we have the setup of our case. You can see already, we will start with a mock-up. That means for everybody who is not familiar with the workflow that we have an unprepared situation so far and we're trying to create a new smile before the operation is actually going. So it is a very nice tool for you to demonstrate for any kind of dentist as well as the patient what the future smile will hold together for the entire process. You will see we have different options in sharing our results with the patient and with the doctor in form of pictures or even in creating an entire mock-up model. That's something we will go through very swiftly today as well and give you a nice little glance of what we have hold up for you for next week's session when we go through the model creator. So with no further ado, I would say we jump right into the case and we open the CAT. There it is, Dental Cat 3.0. Galway engine build 7754. I hope you all of you or many people as possible of you got to enjoy that already. It is a very, very outstanding software and it will make designing so much easier for you. And there's so much joy. You can pretty much create everything you want. And I will show you a little bit of what we will do with it today. So when we start in the software, the wizard is already starting and we will go right into the Smile Creator. And here we get two options. First, we want to load a retracted image of the patient as well as a smiling image. You can proceed without a smiling image and just use a retracted image, but in order to enjoy the full functionality and the full spectrum of the software that it has to offer for you, I would say, use both, it will make things a lot easier for you. So we start with the first picture, it's a retracted picture. And first we go to the alignment. For that, we just search for two points that have a little bit of an outstanding feature that we can recognize again. And we will use those two points exactly on the opposite side as well. From here, we can just go on next or use the hotkey control and tap. And here we will get an overlay of the picture and the scan as well. And here we have several methods for aligning. Please keep in mind, this is only a visualization and also more like an help for your designing process. So you don't have to be 100% accurate. You see those two contact points that we have here. We can move those along and with it, the picture will move and we have two sorts of, of scaling methods here. We can either scale outwards or inwards and we can rotate the picture as well. With that alone, we can create, we can see that the, the shades will overlay as much as possible. I would be fine with that um, result already. 
if there is still some difficulties, you still have the option to use the right mouse button click and then rotate the scan, scan as you can see here in the background. This will give you a little bit more options to optimize your alignment here. Once you're fine with that, for example, I'm pretty happy with this alignment. I will just go on and load the smiling picture. From here, we just open it, they overlay again, and here you will see the first the first impression of the AI-empowered um, facial feature recognition that we have two different pictures that are overlaying. You can see the shades of the retractor here. You can see the outlining of the teeth in general as well. And the software itself already positioned both of those in a very fairly nice alignment. You see those two control points again that we have here. You can use those as before and bring your teeth into position and somehow make as the best alignment that you can find. So I'm very, actually, I'm very, very happy with this result already. I didn't have to do anything. Thank you, dear software, that you helped me. So we get to the lip line. And the lip line is also um, supported by the AI that is helping us with the feature recognition of the facial features. And you can see the outlining is nearly per perfect again for us. We can still do some minor corrections if we want to. We can use the control points and move them around, as well as if you say, let's say the patient has a very weird lip, then you could still follow every every meant shape that you want to by just clicking on the line again. And you can add several control points again and you can make pretty much any shape of lip line that you want. But of course, this is not about a lip design procedure. We are just trying to open a window for later so we can have a better visualization of the restoration that we are planning. So from here, I will just keep on going. The next feature recognition already kicked in. It is the pupils and we have to excuse the software here for a second because we have different light spectrums here and different reflections in the eyes. So the software can be not too sure where the right position is here, but that is something we can just correct manually afterwards. And with those two little clicks, I'm already done. And now we get into the juicy parts. We will start with our um, proportion guide as much as the smile line. You have several options here available. You see a couple of arrows and bend arrows and a couple of control points. And all of those can be used for us to bring everything into position that we want. For example, we can choose from a various list of proportion guides over here. There are many, many available. You have to choose for yourself with which kind of proportion you want to go. I'm actually usually fine with the golden ratio in a case like that. So I'm gonna use it for this case. If I wanted to, I could still add additional lines and curves for depending on what the situation is, what I want to achieve with this restoration or this mock-up. That's completely up to your own preferences. I'm fine with the, the result that we have so far. So I will just zoom in a little bit and tell you a little bit more about the controls. With the control button, like this, you can completely maneuver the, the proportion guide as much as you want. You can tilt it easily with the arrow on the other side, and you can see you all automatically will be shown the angulation of the proportion guide that you have right now in real time, so you can always adjust it to the right angulation as you want to. You can also slimmen or widen the proportion guide with the arrows on the left side. That's what we're gonna do here. So I'm pretty much fine with this. And now we get to the smile line. The smile line would be right here. You have the same options. You can widen it or slim it. You can tilt it or you can move it into position. So I will just move it up a little bit more for us. Yeah. Let's go with that. That looks a lot nicer. All right. And from here, I just continue and I get my first eye outlining. And this is the heart of this module that I want to show you. And I'm pretty sure you will be on my side that this is an amazing feature to create a smile for a patient in the future and show them what they can expect to, to look like. But please always keep in mind, this is in this segment that we are doing today, it's a visualization tool. So we won't have 
perfect results as it was a natural restoration that we um, had because we're doing a mock-up. We're doing something to clip on our existing teeth without preparing them any in any way before to give the patient a little bit of a visualization what the smile will look like. It's a great tool to use, but you have to be realistic about it. It's nothing that you can wear for longer. It's nothing that you can eat with. Please don't do it. It, it would just crack once and that's pretty much it. So let's get into the module itself. We will start by first trying to find the right library for us. We have several options available here. If you have been using our software for a longer time, then you should be familiar with those. For example, in this case, I will use the ZRS01. And by choosing it, the software placed them already in a fairly nice position. We have different options here available how we want to work. Because as you know, here at ExoCAD, we are always trying not to improve just the software. We're also trying to improve your workflows so that you work faster and you work more comfortable and with more fun and you can really design and let loose and just focus on that. So with that, we give you several, several options how you want to work. You can go with the outlining as we have it now and the actual pontics in our side views here. Those side views are a real game changer when you want to design in this software because you can still move everything around as you want to, but you always have the option to get back into your original view and you can do that pretty much with every window here available. You will see at the bottom window that we have two arrows available because it's the lateral view. So we can change in between the lateral sides and give us a very nice perspective of the angulation of the teeth and how they're standing. In the wizard, we have several options available as well. For example, the freeform option, that's something I will get to later on in our design. We can blend in all the measurements if that's necessary for us. For example, if there is something you're planning and you want to add ceramics later on or any kind of veneering, then you have already your measurements of the measurements of the tooth to make your calculations before. And with that, of course, you have your auto hide view obstructions feature. If you have something in the way, it will make the design process a little bit easier for you. And from here, we will also go through different outline modes that we have. You see, what you see right now is the outline mode. That's where we start by default. In my opinion, it's one of the easiest way because you get a very nice overview of the actual situation at the same time. And that gives you a little bit more orientation. But if you want to, I wanna say, look a little bit further ahead. You also have the full tooth mode, for example. If you use that, you will see the entire Pontic standing here. Okay, if you wanna take it a step further, you can also switch to preview mode. And with that, you get a little bit better, a better outlining of the teeth already. Also including the gingiva in the back, you can see shimmering here is a little bit the neck of the tooth, of the original tooth, but this will also give us a slight example how we want to work. So from here, I will just switch back to the outline mode, zoom in a little bit because I want, usually I like to see what I'm working with. And now we want to bring this entire arch into a position that is acceptable for us that we can create a mock-up. So from here, that's how I usually proceed. I just zoom in, I mark the entire row of the teeth that I want. And first I'm gonna use one of the control points that we have here. Those are, they, those are all the same control points, but some of them have several options, how they scale or how they move the teeth that we're working with. For example, if we grab the one in the middle, we will just have a stretching that is exactly what we need at the moment. This will help me very much. I can also use one of the corner bottoms. And if I do that, you can see that I have a three-dimensional outscaling of the teeth and they will get a lot bigger as I want them to be. And that's pretty much it. We can also slim them down and completely scroll them down with the, with the lateral buttons that we have available here. And with that, we can roughly bring our teeth into a certain position how we want it to be and from there we will go to the single tooth selection so i just click outside of the frame 
just to deactivate the frame for a second. And if I click on one single tooth now, it will be activated in all the windows available. And you can work simultaneously on all four of those to bring the tooth in the best position that you want to. So for example, I can just go and see, for example, here I can tilt the view a little bit and see just that my outlining is somehow in the right position. I have here the lateral view to see if I'm going too low with my tooth or not. I'm going down a little bit further just to enclose this part here. Then I just take the second tooth as well and I bring it into position. Now I see, okay, the way it's tilted is maybe not really how I like it. So I have this little tilt arrow here. And if I use that, you can see it already here in the second view window, how the tooth is actually tilting the way I want to. And I'm gonna do this row after row, bring them a little bit into a nicer position here, maybe scale out a little bit because we want to cover this diastema. And if you have been working in a real life laboratory, you know that this is usually not the easiest part to close a gap like this. So let's try to figure out so uh, figure something out how we can actually close this. We can also use the frontal view again, bring the teeth a little bit better into position already. And maybe with my little glitch here, you saw what I did because I was painting a little window. And with that, that gives you the option not only to choose the entire row. No, you can also just go and for example, say you just want the two front teeth to have here and move them simultaneously. That is one option. You also have the other option here is available. It's called mirror movements. If I activate that, every tooth that I would move here will be moved in the same manner on the other side. If you want to work with that, that's up to you. It is a very nice feature to work with. I'm going to switch here over to the other lateral view and move this one a little bit to the side and with this, okay, I'm pretty fine with this kind of shape. I'm going to enhance those two a little bit more and I'm mm, fairly fine with it. I'm just grabbing one of those and closing the gap a little bit more. I think that looks a little bit more convenient for me. Okay, and from here I'm going to look at the canine again and check the length here. We can see, okay, we have a little bit more space available. I'm gonna tilt it in a little bit, move it around, bring it into position, and I'm actually fine with that. With this one, I'm not too fine at the moment, to be honest, so I'm gonna just twist it a little bit over here. Okay, this is pretty nice, if you ask me. I'm really fine with it, we have enough material available to cover up the original teeth to give the patient a very nice um, preview of his future features. And for that, now I just want to go a little bit into the fine tuning. We have the freeform button here. I'm going, just gonna click it. And with that, we have several, okay, better. We have several options available. It is pretty much the freeforming as you know it already. We can move several parts around here. For example, if we want to cover up this part a little bit, oh no, it's just working in this window, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was just me. If I wanted to widen the sides a little bit, you can see it up here already, how it's completely moving with us in the same time. That would be a very nice option for me to actually fine tune a little bit here and there, but, I know it's a lot of fun to play around with the software in this step already. We still have other options available after this window. That's why I say bring everything into position as good as you can in this kind of window because it will help you a lot. You can see the outlining already. And from here, I just click on OK. The calculation is being um, taken over and we just proceed. And from here, we get to the color picking option. And with that, we have several options available that will be very helpful for your daily workflow. For example, one tool that has been there forever, but didn't get as much appreciated as it should be, is over here in the right-hand side, under the tools, we have the adjust light with the magic lantern. The magic lantern will help us a lot with that. If we zoom in, for example, a little bit closer, 
you can see already on the glands, on the teeth, we can really move around and this will help us to create a situation close to the situation we have in the pre-op picture, in our smiling picture, and now we want to pick a color. We have our normal Vita colors available that you all know, that's very nice, but you know how teeth are, they're pretty much individual and that's something we actually encountered with. So we have, maybe you've seen it before in Windows Paint, for example, you have the color picker, how you can pick your colors and we give you the same option here to create a unique and very precise result for your restoration there. So I just choose the color picker and then I could just, let's say I'm gonna click on the gingiva now just to give you a quick demonstration how it works. You can see it's actually very beautiful with the, with the pink shades. That's one option, but to give you the option not to go back and forth all the time and reduce the clicks, that's what we are always after, to reduce the clicks for you as our customers. You choose the, the color picker again, and now when you click on the tooth, hold down the left mouse button and move the mouse. And you can see in the left, in the left side window how my shades are already changing according to how I'm moving here. So I'm gonna just use my base color around here. Now I'm gonna choose the highlight color. That's something, it works the, the exact same way and you want to use it because now you can just move over the surface and you will see if I get, get to the shiny points right here, how they're turning pretty much white already. And I'm trying to compare the pictures, maybe make it a little bit brighter. We're somehow in the same same tone or in the same shade right now. And then we can still customize all the colors we want to with the sliders on the same side. So I'm just gonna make them a little bit brighter to give us a new experience here. And we have the entire picture available. That's our first step where we can actually present something to the doctor and the patient as well. You will see down here in the on the left bottom corner of the wizard that we have several options available. We can either just copy the case to the clipboard and then paste it somewhere into some program, email, whatever, and share it with our customer or the patient. We can also just go and save it to the file. We can save the new picture solely, and that was it. Or we can also save the previous and the old one. Previous and the new one, I'm sorry for that. And with that, you will see if we just go to the case, open it in the Explorer, that we will have the pictures down here available. We can open them right away and we have a comparison of the smiles available that we are about to create here. So I'm just gonna jump back into the software. The lantern is not needed anymore. A quick no side note here, the position of the lighting that you choose for this process will be also applied into the picture if you copy it later on and share it. So this can help you to make uh, even more unique experience for your patient as much as for your dentist. So I'm just gonna close it, we're fine with that. I will keep on going here and we get into the tooth placement. That's pretty much the step that you all know. Here we can still do some fine tuning here and there, maybe change the positioning. For that step, I would recommend, because now it is very important for us that we see certain shapes and, um, and surface patterns, that's very important for us. So in this step, I would recommend to switch off the true smile module that we have here so we can really see the rendering and the, the surface structure of the teeth that we were actually positioning. And from here, I'm actually, yeah, I'm pretty much okay with the situation that we created here. Maybe I can just go and scale this a little bit. And if you have been visiting our previous webinars this and last week, you will also already know about the additional features that we have in the tooth placement. For example, like the anatomic morphing with a cutting to the antagonist, as well as the ana uh, anatomic morphing with an adaption to the ana antagonist. Those are two options I'm not gonna use here because I want to save as much material as possible on the palatinal side for obvious reasons. I mean, you're all dental technicians or dentists, or at least in the industry, you know, this is just for a fit in, for a visualization of what we're dealing with. So I'm not gonna waste any material on this side. 
What I can use also are the scaling features that we have. So for example, I would have the option in this case to just go and scale this tooth out a little bit, give me a little bit more material on this side. The tooth will thicken a little bit, which is okay. We can still position it right that we have the same features. For example, this one could be tilted a little bit more and that's okay. Now we see a little bit of a gap here. Don't panic, that's absolutely all right. We can use the small freeforming tool here and still do some fine tweaking and then go and just pull those sides a little bit in and give us a little bit more of a close standing of the teeth. I'm actually fine with what we created here. Maybe we could cover up this side a little bit more, pull it down. The edges look fine, I'm fine with that. And with that, I will just continue into the next step. And from here, we get right to the wax up bottom step. Of course, there are some things we have to consider here at the moment because we want, especially in the facial side or in the labial side, we want as less undercuts as possible because we need the, the mock-up restoration that we are planning. We want it to, in, at least in the facial side, we want it to be in the most perfect position for the patient to have a more real life experience. So for that, I have two options that you're probably aware of already. I can either use the control points here and move them. You can see in real life already how the undercut is diminishing here, or I can just go and set it by view. And with that, I see the undercuts are all right. Okay, here's a little bit deeper undercut situation, but that's not that's not bad for us. We just apply the whole thing and continue. You can see the calculation is already running down here in the wizard and it's creating our wax up bottom. So bear with me for a second. I'm gonna drink tea. That was refreshing. And here we are with our wax up bottom, it's already calculated in, and we get to the next step, it's the connectors. You've seen probably in our previous webinars already the features of the connectors, how you can move them, how you can position them individually, and how you can also use the multi-view design, which is why I'm not going into that any deeper here. Also, we don't need any connectors for that case. So I'm just clicking on the plus, I'm applying the cross sections, they will be done here, and with this, I will just continue. It's generating our virtual wax up. You can see everything is here. It looks nice. Okay, and we continue. Now we get to the free forming. The free forming is something that you should all be aware of how it works. And here I'm going to use two of my most favorite hotkeys, it's one and two. With that, I can choose in between the add and remove feature as much as the um, smoothening feature. But here I want actually just to add some features because I want to add more material on the palatal side just to cover up the entire tooth as much as possible. This is always depending on the situation, if there is enough material available and you can see it it works pretty much fine. We will have a little bit of a weird shape, of course, because we are added, adding some material right now, which is not, that's no drama. I will show you in a minute how we will deal with that. So first, let me close everything to a certain extent. So I'm happy with that because you know, happiness is very important in our job. And something I can't stress enough in every training or every webinar that I give, is one button, please tell it to all your customers as well. It's a middle mouse button. The middle mouse button will always centralize your view. You're, I hope you're aware of that, but if you're not, then pretty much go and try it. It will really improve your designing process because you don't have to scroll out, move, move, move. You can just use the middle mouse button, centralize your view and get everything into order. So here I will use my second favorite, um, hotkey it is the smoothing button and i'm going to smooth out some of the palatal areas that we just created here and filled up a little bit maybe i can add a little bit more material here that's so much better it's not for a perfect fitting but it will give the patient a little bit of a nicer feeling in the mouth 
So I'm going to do the same now here, but I'm going to be a little bit more careful in the in the facial area for obvious reasons. I'm pretty sure I don't have to explain why, just in case I have to. This is about a mock-up feature. So we're trying to give the patient a view of what is about to come. So of course we want to be as accurate as possible here, but we also don't want to overdo it. We don't want to ex um, distort the view completely so the patient has to use more imagination than anything else. So first, that's I'm fine. Okay, I added a little bit material here and there. What we can do, of course, is we can go and we can just smoothen out a little bit the parts in the front, add them here, okay, just so we have a little bit of an even smile situation. It is a little bit longer now. I know just for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm not gonna take more time for that. I will just go to the adaption step because this is the important part. You can see all the roots or the, the bottom parts of the Pontix that we placed. And now we have to adapt that to our jaw scan. And you can see back here, it says hard cut. That's very important for us. That's why I was filling up the entire regions that I wanted uh, to be filled for later on that we have a cover up. You can see now we have very nice shapes here. We don't have any interruptions. We have smaller cutouts here, but that's okay. That's not in an area where it actually really concerns us. Again, I would recommend not to adapt the occlusal or the approximal parts here as much as possible because the way they are, it's just for a fit in, they're fine. So we just continue. We get our disclaimer that we didn't adapt, that's okay. So we continue, the restoration will be merged and saved so far. And you can see here, we have our very, very beautiful mock-up design. And now you can see in the wizard, we have several options available. For example, we will just go right ahead into designing the model. And with that, that's what I promised you in the beginning of this webinar. You will have a little bit of a brief preview of the model creator that you will get to see next week, hopefully, if you have the time to show in. The um, wizard already detected that we are creating a mock-up, so we want to actually choose the model type digital wax up model. And with that, here you have a little bit of a preview of what's about to come next week. You shouldn't miss it. You have different options available to align the model here. I'm pretty fine with the situation as it is, so I will just continue. And here you can see our mock-up design again. And here we have the options available. We can either choose the full Pontic design as it is, or we could also use the anatomic wax up that we just created. So to make it more realistic, I'm gonna choose the anatomic wax up because it's the, the, the situation that the patient will have in their mouth, even if it's not that accurate, but that's up to your own preferences, how you want to run that. Here we have different, uh, separate, uh, different settings available, for example, presets that regard our printing method. You will hear more about that next week, I promise. And we have different base options available about the model that we are about to create, wall thicknesses, offsets, etc. But I'm not going any further into that. I will just run the model and click on next because there is nothing I want to change afterwards. The calculation is running. You can see here what's about to come. There it is. I was this close to breaking the silence. All right, so Here's our model already with the anatomic wax up that we did. It gives us a perfect impression of where we're going with this kind of model. From here, we could choose several attachments. The attachments I'm gonna leave for next week as well. I'm just gonna show you the little text feature. It's very nice. For example, we wanted to add some text. And I'm just gonna use here, gonna use passion. And if I use the right, right arrow here, that's something many people are not aware of. You can actually choose from a variety of different types of, of, um, of fonts. You can, you can make it bold, inverted or whatever. It's very nice. 
we just click on OK. We just click here and we bring it into position. It's going to be nice. We can have it either bolted or debolted. That's up to you. But I'm pretty much fine with what we have here. So we just click on Next. The calculation you can see is already merging into one part. And there it's done. And our model is done. All right. That was it for the first part. And in the next example, we will get into the anatomic bite spin. But if I am correct, there is a quick uh, question and answer part. Is that correct? No. OK, there is no, no quick question and answer part. <laughs> Was just, maybe, you know. um, Joe, maybe only yes, please. one question. Uh, please explain again job type mockup teeth. What is it? Just uh, short teeth. words. This is a new work type. Since okay, COVID. it is a new work type available. If we click on one of the teeth to see into the work types, so you can see it's available up here with the new Galway version of ExoCAD that we have the mockup type. And the mockup type pretty much is a visualization tool for you to show the patient what we are dealing with in the future. In several other ways, it can be even used for therapeutic ways. That's up to your own preferences, how you want to work with it. We have that mock-up type available just to give you the demonstration and a versatile um, versatile perspective of how you can use the Smile Creator. You can't just use it to create a mock-up design to give a patient a nice overview. I mean, that's nice, but that's not all it can do. There is a lot more behind that. You can design entire restorations the same way. You don't need unprepared teeth and pictures for that. You can just as, the, as well use prepared scans and pictures as well, and that will give you a lot more options to create a perfect smile, a unique experience for your patient as well, and also include them more and more into the process of the making. And I think it's 2021. Everybody wants more. We need to catch up with quality and diversity. And with that, we can create unique experiences. So if you haven't updated to the Galway um, version yet, do it and you will see your craziest desires of designing will come true. All right, was that it? I guess so. Thank you, Michael. I will switch to the next case, and for that, we will see the bite splint, including anatomy. We open the case. You will see it's not that much different as you're used to be. So we open the work type again. Here you can see that I switched my DB to German and forgot to switch that. It says bite splint. I'm very sorry for that at this point, but you can see we have different different work types available here as well. And this is the new version, it's the tabletop. And we will use anatomies from the library to actually make a 24, 24 seven cast for the patient to wear. And with that, and no further ado, I will jump right into design, into the cat. That is also set up for English. So I don't have to translate it anymore. And here it is. Yeah, here we go. Tip of tea. Here we go. We start with the bottom. Of course, bottom to top, that's how we like to work. And first, we want to consider the undercuts in this case. Since this is um, a splint that it has to be worn pretty much 24 seven, we want to make it as comfortable and still as secure for the patient as possible. So I will just tilt this a little bit and try to take a little bit out of the undercut in the label area here. For that, we have the two options available as you've seen before. Either we can just use the dot to move the arrow or we can just set the insertion direction by view. What I just did, you can see it's very nice that way. We have a very nice undercut in the molar and premolar area. And with that, you can see we have different options available here. 
considering our offset, the angulation of your block out, everybody has their own preferences here and we want to give you all the options available that you can really work the way you want to and you don't have any restraints or restrictions that you have to accommodate yourself with. So with here, I'm fine with the, the settings that I have already, I will just apply and with that my byte splint bottom is calculated as you can see in the in the left bottom corner of the wizard and why i didn't just choose to go on next is because i want to show you a little feature that will make the out blocking part a lot more convenient for you now that we have our our splint bottom part we also have the freeforming tab available and that gives you the option to use pretty much the add, remove, and smoothing tools that you have available in your usual designs to actually remove, add, or smooth out a block out material here as well. So with this, regarding to your own preferences, you can actually create a very unique experience and really work the way you want to. I'm not gonna change anything here. I will just keep on going and here I'm I'm asked to start the virtual articulator. That's something I, of course, want to use for a case like that. And I will give myself a little bit more room. We scanned it in with a little bit of a distance and an elevated byte, and I want to leave the gap in this second here. And I also want to give me a little bit more of freedom to play. So I just choose one. You can see how it already elevated by itself. I start the articulator to implement the movements as much as the elevation that I just had. Everything is done. Also due to one of our tools that you can enhance the GPU acceleration for the movements. So it gets a lot faster in the future. And I just press okay and keep on going. So now I'm asked to place my teeth that I want to. Just look at the wizard as usual. It gives you all the options and it tells you what to do. So we are here in the third quadrant. I will just place my teeth roughly. Don't worry, you can still place them in a different way. I just wanted to choose a different library. For example, let's do something very nice. I'm gonna use generic smooth. That looks nice. That looks nice for me. If you wanted to, you can still grab one of those control balls and still move it around a little bit just for minor corrections, but I just keep on going. Something you want to consider that you have to choose your library again because we are in a different set of teeth at the moment. And I choose the generic smooth edition again, and I just set real quickly my control points here. Fine, that looks nice to me, and I just keep on going. So here we are in a tooth placement, and as you probably assumed, Exactly, we start in the chain mode. So I'm gonna use one of my other favorite hotkeys. Um, it's gonna be A, and with that, I can actually blend out the antagonist really quickly, and I can roughly bring my teeth into position for this demonstration purpose, and we keep on going with that. You also have the options available as usual. You could also use the advanced tab, for example, if you set on the show distance feature, you could also use the cutting features, <clears throat> as you can see here, to actually have a very nice experience and to fasten up your design process. But for now, I'm gonna stay in the chain mode and I bring everything into position as I feel it should be. That's fine, I'm locking my two disks so nothing happens here anymore. Let's see what we can do with this side. Yeah, let's go a little bit more inside. That's okay, a little bit further and closer. Nice. Let's see what we have in the back here. And this is one of the points again where I would say, please use your middle mouse button because it will make it a lot easier for you to navigate. So I have my two disks set and I can see, oh, we have a lot of contacts here and I still want to bend that. I can go, I can add several curves. For example, I want a little bit more of a contact here. For that, I can also use the antagonist and bring things a little bit nicer into position. Okay, but now I say, huh, this part is a little bit 
too high up in the air, so I want to carry it down. This one stays in position quite nice, and I want to add a little bit more of a curve into my into my anatomy. So I'm just using the chain features that we have since I locked the disc and that tooth to create a very nice experience here for us. We can easily go and manipulate everything we want. We can also still tilt it by holding the control button, and with that, we can bring pretty much everything into position that we want to. From here, you can still use the single feature or the tube feature as you want to. That's really up to you. Please consider this is um, a therapeutic material and also device that we're using. So the positioning needs a little bit of a more contact area in the occlusal area. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side now. I'm gonna bring everything into contact. Maybe we want to go a little bit further in here. Antagonist, you're in my way, thank you. Okay, and we're fine with that. And we can see we have a lot, that's a very deep bite, and that's maybe a little bit too much for my taste. So we're pulling it all down a little bit. Let's see what we can do here. Let's make a little bit of curve, tilt it a little bit more to the inside, and that's very nice. Okay, so, uh, so far I'm fine with what we're dealing here. I'm gonna look at the shapes. Maybe I can see if I can turn out the belly parts here a little bit. We have a tooth interaction, we know that, thank you. And from here, Pulling it out, we didn't pull that one out. That's better. Okay, so with this, I'm not too happy about this molar back here, how it stands, but for this purpose, I think we can just continue. So we also keep in the time schedule. Now we get to the free forming here, we can still adapt and fine tweak everything the way we want to. That's really up to you. To keep in the time frame, I'm just going to go to the adapt step, and here I want to actually adapt your occlusal parts. And since we ran the virtual articulator before, we also have the option to choose between static or dynamic occlusion here. So I will just cut the intersections. It will look a little bit rougher in some parts. If we look here, for example, we have quite deeper impressions, but that's okay. For that purpose, I just press two. And here I can just soften down one, some of the edges, make the occlusal area a little bit softer for us. It is still a lot of, not a lot of, but some fine finishing will be needed afterwards for a, pro, for a progress like this and also a product like this. It's absolutely necessary that we always have our very skilled finishing hands on it to give the patient a very nice experience. So I'm just, Smoothing down the teeth a little bit. It was a little bit deeper than expected. I give you that, I'm sorry for that. But I'm very much sure that you know where we're going with this. So from here, I will just continue and now we get to the design of the, of the splint itself. So how we do that is actually very easy. You have your normal um, settings here about your occlusal thickness or the peripheral thickness. In order for this type of um, workflow that we have here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually set the peripheral thickness to the same thickness as occlusal. So we go, nah. do as I tell you, please. Thank you. Here we go, it's 05. And now I will just keep on designing. And for that, I will just start clicking here and I will go around the area that I want to cover. And for this, please bear with me for a second. It's a quick design and I also know that maybe some of you are already standing on their desks and saying, no, we need a different design and how can you do that? We have a saying for that in Germany and it says eight different dental technicians usually share 15 different opinions with each other. And I'm pretty sure if you have been long enough in the business, then you can all agree with me that there, that is definitely a fact. So please don't 
don't chase me down the alley with pick, pitchforks and, and torches in your hands. We all have our own ways. And also, this is just a demonstration purpose. So I will just swiftly go through it and finish my design here. And again, I'm using the middle mouse button just to centralize my view. And for this part, just to irritate the tongue a little bit more, you know, we also need some fun here and there. I will just go through. I'm going to use a little bit more of the undercuts here so the patient doesn't lose the cast in the middle of the day or while he or she is speaking. And now that's something very important. If we do a double click here, we will finish the line, we will close the curve, and the calculation will start. So before we do that, I will just do a quick and swift overview over my design, how I went, because I could still go and I can move everything the way I want to. I can I can easy the, uh, ease the parts if I wanted to, but I'm fine with that. So from here, I make my double click. The calculation starts and the byte splint is running. It just takes a second. And there it is already. So you can see our design. It adapted already very nicely to the tooth shapes that we have. And it covers up all the regions that we wanted to. OK, we're very fine. So I keep on going and go on next. Now we have the possibility to actually freeform the splint. We could now create, for example, a canine guidance over here. Um, we could lengthen or support more the, the frontal parts. We can also cover up a little bit more of the, of the tooth shapes that we implemented. That's up to your own preferences and how you want it to be. For example, we could easily go and fill up gaps like this, maybe make it a little bit stronger, zip. And this is how we go through the entire design. In a real patient case, of course, we would just go and make this perfect if we wanted to. We also have the option here available to form it anatomically. That's something you maybe remember if you have been designing a gingiva with our software. You have small and, and larger regions. And with this, you can easily go and cover up the entire tooth shape that we have and really enhance your design. There's something you want to see in the freeforming again. It's the keep bottom and boundary fixed. It's checked by default. If you uncheck that, you actually get the chance. And that's something you have to enjoy with care, how I say it, because now you really have the option to manipulate the boundaries of the, of the entire cast or the entire splint as much as the bottom. So if we would later on in the finished design, we can completely misdesign our, our bottom part here. So please be aware of that. Make your adjustments, really go swiftly over some parts, but be aware that there is something you should take care of. So from here, I just continue and the restoration will be merged and saved again. This process takes a minute longer than the other calculation because you have to consider we have entire Pontix here. As you can see, they have to be cut up onto the top of the splint that we just created. And in order for that, of course, it needs a minute or two. And now this is our finished product. Don't, don't freak out if you see, oh, there's still some, some lines, some shadings here. You could still go to the freeform restorations option, and here you can really smoothen out all the parts, even better than before, because before you had the Pontix and our splint part, to bring that into order can be very difficult, which is why we give you the option in the end to make your finishing design and just to smoothen out all those bulgy parts that you don't want to see, or if there are some minor tweaks that you want to change, you can still do that. All right. Yeah. Thanks again. Great. Yeah. Useful information. Waiting, waiting for the next uh, webinar. Yeah. Greetings from Iceland, from India. That's great that you <laughs> watched the webinar. That's, that's perfect. Thanks. <laughs> so, yes. You have to make have a, a there. Definitely. Nice day. Nice week. And yeah. See you next week. Take care, everybody. See you bye next bye. week. Take care. Bye bye. It was a pleasure.
Bye.